product, say a food product, um, and you look at how this system affects uh, the price of it. The farmer growing the food in the field to start with will be borrowing money that doesn't exist and paying interest on it. So the price he charges will have to reflect the fact that he's got to do that. So in effect, what he does costs more. Same with the transport company from the farm to the factory. Now, the factory that's processing the food will be, um, no doubt, borrowing vast amounts of money that doesn't exist and paying interest on it, and its cost and its price will reflect that. Same with the transport from the factory to the shop, same with the shop. So by the time we put our hand up on the shelf and pull the product off, the cost of that product is massively inflated compared with what it needs to be because everyone along the line in its production is having to add a little bit to pay interest on money that doesn't exist. Wake me up. This is why we buy three houses to live in one. We do this. I went up um, into the National Westminster Bank in Durham the north of England last year, and I got one of their mortgage leaflets. There it was in black and white. If I take out a loan to buy a house from the National Westminster Bank of £50,000, I will pay them back £152,000. I will buy three houses for the privilege of living in one, and my mortgage payments will reflect that. Therefore, the pressure for me to serve the system, to earn the money to service that debt, will be greater. And what did it say on this leaflet? The National Westminster Bank, we're here to make life easier. <laughs> Great question, that I found anyway, because all this is flipping opened up to me in the last few years. I didn't come out of the womb saying, I, I know it all. I, you know, I can see what's going on. It's just information that's opened my eyes in the last few years. Um, and one of the questions that I've realized um, opens up so much, it's a very simple one, who benefits? Who benefits, for instance, from, from me accepting the version of events about the Oklahoma bombing and many other things that various media organizations and official governments and stuff are telling me um, is the right version of events? Who benefits? Well, who benefited from the Oklahoma bombing? Anyone who wants to centralize um, uh, more, more power in the uh, law enforcement agencies in America certainly has benefited from that. And as Bill Clinton said 24 hours afterwards, uh, we must have an easing of restrictions of the, uh, on the military's involvement in domestic law enforcement. Problem, reaction, solution. And there's so much about that Oklahoma bomb that has never come to light publicly in the main arena that I've seen. And I tell you, the government version of events is a farce and a complete um, lie. Anyway, who benefits from us buying three houses to live in one? Another part of that question. Well, say the house costs 60,000 pounds. The builder who actually creates the thing and makes it a reality, he don't benefit from me buying three. He's paid out the 60 grand. He's paid out on me buying one. The guy who um, produces the materials, to the builder so he can build the house, he's paid out the 60 grand. Everyone who actually creates the house is paid out of me buying one. One person and one person alone benefits from us buying three houses, sometimes more, to live in one, and that's the guy who's lending us money that doesn't exist and charging us interest on it. And we stand for this. And a few people can't control the direction of the world. Well, we'll give our power away to this extent. It's a doddle. Interestingly, two presidents of the United States uh, in the history of that country have suggested and in some small way begun to introduce interest-free money that wasn't borrowed from the banking cartels and interest paid on it. Those two presidents were Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. They have one other thing in common, you might recall. But perhaps the most grotesque aspect of this whole nonsense of interest on money is what we call third world debt. Third world debt has crucified vast tracts of our fellow humanity and continues to do minute by minute. The third world debt 
his debt on money that has never, does not, and will never exist. Last time I saw the figures, around 400,000 children in Brazil died from hunger-related disease every year. And at the time I saw those figures, Brazil was the second biggest exporter of food in the world. And the money received from that export, great chunks of it, was servicing interest on money that has never existed. And as one Brazilian official I was reading about recently um, said, most of the money that constitutes the Brazilian debt never left the computer systems of Wall Street. My God, it's time for a turning of the tide. Why can't governments print their own money interest-free and lend it to people interest-free so we buy one house to live in one house instead of three? So we don't have to inflate the price of everything because everyone's got a service interest on money that doesn't exist. Why? Because it possible the will is not there and why is it that no political party that I've come across anywhere in the world that has any chance of forming a government is actually suggesting that that be done 